Now, just before I start on the, what I was going to say, I just want to stress something very much with followed on from what Camilla said, because uh, I, although this, my main specialist is the Chinese economy, I follow Latin American economy as close as I can. And I always point out that the economic policy in Latin America, which is closest to China, is Bolivia's both from the point of view of economic, uh, the state, the role of the state, the very high levels of investment. And it was not simply the case, therefore, that Evo Morales started in the countryside and went to the cities, although that was something in common with Mao Zedong. It was also that the economic policies in Latin America are most like those of China. I would love at some point to go into discussion. I can't do it today, but I just wanted to emphasize it very much. Okay, what, what I want to do here is really to point out that there are three phases of China's poverty allevi alleviation, each of which has got different methods, and it's important to understand all of them. As, um, what's happened here? Why is this not going down? All right, yeah, okay. As Radhika mentioned, um, my, this, I'm gonna give you a summary, which is just in my book. Uh, the reason that there's two covers there is because there's a, a, a US edition uh, and a European edition. So therefore I very much would encourage people to get that of course, because this is only a very short summary of what's in that, that. okay. I'm gonna use a consistent international um, definition of world poverty, which is the World Bank current one, which is $1.90 a day expenditure measured in what are technically known as purchasing power parities. I won't bother take the time to explain what that means, but it means it's a consistent international standard. Okay. The first thing that we first phase is what happened in China between 1949 and 1978. And this is the biggest social miracle in the whole of human history. And I say they, those are not exaggerated words, they're very carefully chosen words. You can make the best comparison between China with China and another country by looking at India, because they achieved their modern economic ex, political forms essentially at the same time, 1947 and 1949. And I want to look therefore at the first, the state of the social miracle is the incredible increases in life expectancy in China, shown in this red line. And look incidentally when this occurred during the 1960s, for example. And this immediately crushes all this talk that the Mao period was a great disaster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. On the contrary, China saw the fastest increase in life expectancy in a major country in the whole of human history during the period of Mao Zedong. Uh, life expectancy increased on the best estimates by 31 years. That is by more than one year for every year that Mao was in power. And if you want to know why Mao Zedong is held in such esteem in China, it's for two reasons. Fundamentally, because he established the national independence of the country after a century in which China was simply trampled on by foreign countries. And secondly, if someone leads you to live 31 years longer than you expected at the beginning, you tend to feel really well rather disposed towards them. And that explains the things. And all these attempts, therefore, to portray um, Mao as some sort of horrible um, maniac, great dictator, carry no weight, whatever, in China, because people understand the reality in China of what it, Mao Zedong meant for that country. Okay. However, while there were spectacular social achievements, it should be said that economic growth in China during this period was not extremely high. Uh, the world per capita GDP growth from 1950 to 1978 was 2.7%. And China's per capita GDP growth was 2.8%, basically the same. The great social achievements of China were therefore due to the concentration on the correct things, that is on primary education, on primary health. Again, we could make a comparison to India where the resources went into the universities, where they went into the top of the health system. This didn't deliver the type of improvements for the people that were delivered in China. So these were great social achievements, but it wasn't actually very rapid economic growth. What happened after 1978 with the introduction of the socialist market economy, I will, again, I don't have time to describe it, it's still in my book, but it's an, an economic system in line with Marx and has proved itself the most successful in the history of the world. From 1978 to 2020, China's annual GDP growth was 9.2%. This has no precedent 
in any major country in the whole of human history. And it was, of course, this eco gigantic economic growth that created the basis for the mass poverty reduction. People have pointed to specific programs and so on, which were very necessary, but without this enormous economic growth, this poverty reduction would not have been possible. Okay. Again, I just want to show the differences here. I've shown you the change, the, I've taken a 10 year moving average just to get involved, get rid of the fluctuations. You can see the growth rate of China in the pro pre-1978 period, and then the much, much faster growth rate of China after 1978. So there was a quantum leap in China's level of economic growth with the introduction of the socialist market economy in 1978. What did this do for poverty reduction? Again, I've taken the World Bank standard. This is the reduction of poverty from its maximum. I've taken not from a single year because some countries had their maximum poverty later. India, for example, had ma maximum poverty after 1978. This shows you what is the cheat of China. By World Bank standards, 853 million people lifted out of poverty compared to India, which has an approximately equal population of 166 million. Now, you may say, of course, while the comparison to China and India is reasonable, the other countries are much smaller than China. So you wouldn't, it's not a big surprise. Therefore, you might think it's not a big surprise that China had a much bigger poverty reduction. So I've therefore taken three areas of the world which do have approximately the same uh, population. The population of India is very slightly smaller than China's, but about only 100 million. The population of Sub-Saharan, the population of the whole of Africa is 1.4 billion, about the same as China, and Sub-Saharan Africa accounts for the great bulk, great bulk of that. So you can see in Sub-Saharan Africa, unfortunately, there has been no reduction in the number of people living in poverty, very unfortunately. In India, there has been some, but in China, the reduction is absolutely more massive. This is, as, as these are areas with essentially the same population, this is showing you that China's poverty reduction was spectacularly greater than any other country in the world or any other economic region in the world. Okay, finally, what we might say on this is, what it also shows it's socialism that reduces poverty, not capitalism. This is particularly important to deal with the farcical claims uh, that the reason that China's reduced poverty is because the introduction of capitalism. Well, in that case, if you thought that China had produced, uh, introduced uh, capitalism, in that case, there's a slightly puzzling question. Why didn't the poverty reduction take place in capitalist countries instead of socialist ones? I could go into many, many more arguments why China is a socialist country, but it's very weird. I'm sorry, there's a little thing's fallen off of the one of the, the blue, but you can see what it is. If you take the world poverty reduction, 75% of world poverty reduction took place in China. 3% of world poverty reduction took place in socialist countries in Indochina, incidentally, where what is basically China's economic model was carried out. Uh, Laos and Cambodia also, and Vietnam have fantastic records in poverty reduction. China's is the biggest, but because by, by far it's the biggest country. So therefore, all developing capitalist countries, which have a much, much larger population than China, produce 22% of world's reduction in poverty, and China produced 75%. And if you take socialist countries together, it produced 78%. If you want a simple illustration of the fact that it's socialism that reduces poverty and not capitalism, I think you can find that in that chart. Then finally, as is correct, as Fructings has uh, emphasized, nevertheless, uh, after this gigantic economic growth, which was necessary to lift this eight more, you know, more than 800 million people out of poverty. Nevertheless, there were areas of the country which simply the huge economic growth could not get rid of the poverty. This was, in some cases it was due to infrastructure problems, uh, geography problems, uh, historical problems, etc. And that had to be dealt with by targeted 
poverty reduction programs. And this is the great thing. They it wasn't. This is what's being done now. It wasn't left to so-called, uh, you know, just economic growth. Very specific and precise methods were taken. Uh, building infrastructure, uh, putting in the economy, and many of the things which Ting's uh, referred to. So finally, therefore, so as not to abuse the time, um, what I want to say, therefore, is we should really see China's poverty reduction as occurring in three great historical periods. The first is the Mao period, which is a, a, a social miracle, which has to be defended against all attacks on Mao but it was not characterized by extremely rapid economic growth. And in very serious matters, you have to say what is the truth. Uh, some people want to extol the planned economy, et cetera, in China, I'm afraid the facts do not sustain that. Right. The uh, second period, which is the one, which is the removal of hundreds of millions of people of poverty was basically produced by the socialist market economy and the economic growth that was shown there. And then the third phase, is the um, targeted program. So that, this is why we're tempted to give here is a view of the economic background to what were the poverty reduction programs in China. Thank you very much.